one point you ended up on Def Comedy Jam. Right. I got that first season. That's my great friend, Bernie Mac. Rest in peace. Got me on it. Oh, rest in peace, rest man. In peace. Rest in light, because that brother is an angel. And he, he was a real man. You know what I'm saying? Like, black men are rare. Niggas, they everywhere. You can open the glove cop compartment of your car, four niggas will fall out. But black men who have integrity, who stand for their community, their family, their God, very, very rare. Bernie Mac was a black man. He was just a great guy. He, he, he had integrity. He wouldn't stab you in the back. He was just excellent. And when that show came, I didn't even know about it. He's the one told me about that show and talked to them and said, you got to get this brother on a show. At the time, I just hit Venice Beach. I just started telling jokes and passing my hat. I wasn't making paper money yet, brother. Mm. I was out there passing my hat getting coins. I hadn't got approached by the homeless guy. A white homeless guy talked to me, and that changed my money structure because mm. he said, man, people are always talking about being colored, but it's not black folks of color. Black folks are the same color. No matter what happened, it's right. white folks who are born one color. Then when they cold, they blue. When they mad, they red. And when they die, they gray. There's your colored people. And I took that and turned it into what I call the basic colored people's routine. Mm -hmm. So now I was giving people substance. I wasn't just telling jokes. you know. So now it made people think and feel as well as laugh. I'm talking about their wallets literally popped out of their pockets. People were giving me 20s and 50s and $100 bit watches. Gold chains mm. all of a sudden because now I wasn't just telling jokes. I was touching people. I was moving people because I was getting to their heart. You know. Yeah. How much did you make and what was the most you've ever made in one day on the street? I can't say that. <laughs> okay. I can't say that. But I did good. <laughs> you did, I good. did good. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. And you know, Def Comedy Jam was the biggest comedy springboard on television ever. Yeah. Honestly, if you look at yeah. what came out of there, yeah. Dave Chappelle, mm -hmm. Chris Tucker, everybody. Uh, everybody, man. Kevin Hart. Yeah. I mean, it just goes on Bernie. and on and Bernie Mac. Cedric the Entertainer. Uh, I mean, R Ricky Smiley who I just Ricky interviewed. Smiley. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody. You know, I could bring that show back, but it needs a great MC. Well, it came back. A little bit. It needs a great MC. But then Russell got caught up in all that. It needs a Me great too. MC. And I'm not saying the other guys weren't great, but I'm saying... Tony Rock is pretty shows, good. Tony Rock is a very great comedian. Yeah. He's, a, he's a very good comedian. But when you compare him to Martin Lawrence, it's a little bit of a hard sell. When you compare him to Michael Kalia, and I know he may respond to that, it's a hard sell. <laughs> I'm telling you, it really makes a difference what the, who the MC is. It makes all the difference in the world. I mean, with a great MC, you can have mediocre comedians. Because you have somebody to drive the show. Uh, that show was great because Martin Lawrence was great. He yeah. was a great MC. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so if you have a great MC, and this is with any show, then people will have someone who's holding their hand, who's walking them through the show. You know what I'm saying? So even if the next guy's just all right, they know when this guy comes back, he's going to hit them with something that's, that's awesome. He may play off what the first guy said, or mm -hmm. he may have something else in his arsenal. Please, I am not trying to take anything away from any of the artists who came out and emceed shows. I ain't trying to be in beefs with nobody. I never am. I don't <laughs> right. play that game. But they, uh, uh, who was the guy? Uh, P. Diddy had a show that he brought out. It was a comedy show. Uh, yep. uh, Comic View has had, you know, try, tried to have different shows after their original shows. All of them, I still think, was missing the one key element. You got to have an awesome MC. Yeah. He can't just be good. He's got to be awesome. Well, I, I just interviewed uh, Ricky Smiley, and I mm -hmm. asked him for his, t you know, excluding himself, who his mm -hmm. top three stand-up comedians are. Mm -hmm. You got to start with Richard Pryor, right? Then you know you had then Eddie Murphy, yep, or whatever. Now, now when you say number three, yeah, that's a that tough can one. be tied a lot of ways because when you say with number three, uh, you got Martin Lawrence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which, 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 is, which is my top choice, you know, for number three. Yeah, Martin Lawrence is great. Yeah. Martin Lawrence is, is great, but arguable. I don't... I number don't, three is a very arguable it's position. It's an arguable position because Bernie arg Mac Bernie was Mac was great. one of the ones that he mentioned as well. And he was so great because like the great Richard Pryor, he came from his experience of life. Mm -hmm. It's a difference in telling jokes and situations. When you're talking about the stuff that actually happens to you, it's a whole different level of humor because now the audience connects with you in a different way. 
Because anything that happened to you happened to 86% of the audience that you're talking to. Right. They have experienced it. So now they relate to you on a whole different level. You know, but Martin Lawrence is great. Martin Lawrence is great. Martin Lawrence is great.